somewhere deep in the labyrinth winds, you see a complex of gears and clouds floating above a checkerboarded plane. A man made entirely of bronze and gears whirs away at the greater machination. In front of him, a large table is laid out with the great metal framework of what looks to be an eight-foot-tall metal horse, half constructed and laid out on the table. <clears throat> Ah, uh, it seems. No, nearly two of them are missing. No, 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 no. That's impossible. I must be able to read you just the sprocket in order to... A clatter rings out amidst the clockwork. A massive bronze door swings open, and a robed figure strides into the room. The machine man stops for a moment, whirring around to face the figure. Clunk, I brought you something. He strides forward towards the table and places down a clockwork rat on the table. You see the man made out of metal scurry to get a closer look. It stares down at the rat, eyes cold and calculating. Hmm. Thanks, Pops. I'll make sure to study it real close. He gives the rat a little scratch, the sound of metal against metal screaming out. How goes that game of yours? Wizard's chess? I've worked out the main algorithm, but I'm still stuck on the mechanics. You're so good with them. How many effort to compare? You'll get there one day. Now, what's currently troubling you? Well, you see, his goddamned crank here won't activate the release valve. Ah, that's because you're turning the wrong crank. Here. He leans down underneath the bronze framework and adjusts a few mechanisms. A whoosh of steam bellows forth, and the eyes of the horse glow bright red. Ah, wonderful, wonderful! Thanks a million, Daddy-o! You saved my ass on that one! He sits down and begins editing the schematics for the massive horse-shaped automaton. 150 years later, the same machine sits in an older version of the previous room. The frameworks of hundreds of dead or deconstructed machines lay littered around. The sliding door entrance opens, yet this time, someone entirely different steps in. Ah, a guest? Who interrupts me at this critical moment? Hail, Magister. Vacuum, is that you? Watch your tongue, machine. Grand Magister will do. Oh! Ah, but of course, your majesty. <laughs> she crosses her arms at him. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a little joke. <laughs> uh, around the clockwork wizard, a small ring of shadows appears around his neck and uh, goes inwards. <laughs> Chokes the clockwork wizard. Vercule steps forth and pulls him towards her. What's wrong, Magister? It's just a little choke. She releases him and steps back, laughing. Ah, silly, silly machine. I would have done more, but ah, you've made me proud. Uh, she places down a vial of black tarry substance. Blue flame licks to life in her hand. This spell you crafted me. It's incredible. Ooh, says the clockwork wizard. Now that's a fine specimen. He scrambles towards the black jar. Metal claws grasp at the glass, and it's hoisted close to the mechanical eye of the clockwork wizard. How long did it take? Full body decomposition started almost instantaneously. I've harvested the magic of half of Australia to be destroyed. Do you think it will not be enough? Grand Magister, the stars, they threaten us. We must remove more of the magic before it is too late. She ponders for a moment. Shall we take the Kaida district? Grand Magister, would you willingly incur the wrath of Ballast Wimbledon? You must know surely that he may strike back. Ballast does not frighten me. First, however, she looks towards the crystal ball. There's matters I must attend to. It appears that the good Baron has passed away. They must be close to the first tower. No. No, not possible. The mechanical wizard scrambles over the crystal ball, scratching at it frantically. Where? 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 Impossible! Ah, ah so it is. We cannot let them damage the spell. 
No, of course not. That's why I will personally ensure their death is swift. Prepare more of your guard dogs. I will head out immediately. Then we can continue with the Carter takeover. And as she says this, the air goes cold. Even you know, though you know this is a vision, uh, you can feel the air chill. It's not flashy. It's not even noticeable if you weren't looking directly at it. Simply, at one moment, there was no one but Vercule and the machine wizard in the room. And then there was someone else. A wavery form of a human locked in a static scream looks towards Vercule. The two will share a stare for a hard second. If the machine wizard could sweat, he would. The group stands still for quite some time, no one daring to move. Then Vercule breaks the silence. Very well. Has been decided. I shall remain here where my duties are needed. Instead, Nazgul will be going in my place. She turns towards the form and smiles. It is their area of expertise, after all. The wearing form bows for a second, and then is gone. <sighs> Returning to the party, <laughs> we see they've chosen to take a rest by the grave of Baron LeBlanc. Not the most inviting locale, but they take what they can get. Joel and Frank were able to set up a makeshift fire and have been cooking meals for the party. Hazel's been playing with her dog the whole time and drawing in the silt. She has managed to actually remember his name, uh, his name being Wacko. Uh, Solomon has had his eagle scouting the skies, and Seldra has been attempting to repair her arm after the corruption spell hit. She's managed to get a framework down, but it is still fragile at this point. And Tenrir has managed to ritual identify both magical items the party had discovered from the manor. So I'm going to describe to you what these things are, and uh, you can. So basically, well, we'll start with <laughs> we'll start with the cloak of mystique. So this <laughs> is the item you got from uh, from from uh, tuxedo mask. <laughs> it is a magical uh, armor that gives the wearer plus ten to their projected charisma score, but minus one to their actual charisma score. And you can create one magical rose as a bonus action. These roses can be thrown as a ranged weapon and deal 1d6 plus your dex modifier ranged damage. Hmm. Uh, Frank Better is currently rolling, wearing it. Oh, uh, they uh, seem like they fit. The guy Frank. The guy Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So, so, so it actually makes your charisma worse, but you think you're far more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's a good thing I'm not taking these. These are perfect for you, Frank. <laughs> well, I think I look absolutely stunning in them, if I'm going to be honest. You look quite stunning, uh, Frank. Uh, don't let it get to your head. Um, they might be a little cursed. Cursed? Hmm. Well, I'm not taking it off until I find something better. I, I think cursed, but I mean, um, well, the thing is, eh, you know what, it's nothing important right now. It's not detrimental to your health. Well, that's good. I really, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to wear something detrimental to my health. Mm. It just, question, what can you even do? I know you had that veil thing, but you uh, never fully explained yourself. He pulls out the axe. Well, I can hide, and I can chop things. But magic-wise, can't you do magic besides that I'm tale? not really great at it. I've got a few spells, a few wizard things, but yeah, despite their attempts to teach me magic, I'm not very proficient at it. Mm, I mean, truth be told, they didn't really teach me much. I've been, uh... Well, that's because yeah. you were asleep in most of my classes. <clears throat> I didn't actually come to most of those. I'm aware. <laughs> But I did still listen through a praxis. I have the notes, actually. I've been studying something different. I'd rather not say. Um, Tenry, you were also able to uncover the meaning behind LeBlanc's mask. 
This item gives off an absolutely overwhelming magical signal. It has been imbued with an undying spell, making the mask immune to the wear and tear of time. It gives the wearer plus one to their spell save DC, and seems to have once been soulbound to Baron LeBlanc, as the runic marks for such a spell remain etched into its sides. There's a gem inset in the front, two eye holes and a mouth hole, and oddly enough, near the top back of the mask, there are two holes carved into it, almost as if something was originally meant to go through them. Uh, you hadn't been able to see them under LeBlanc's ghost's cloak, but they're definitely here on the actual thing. Uh, I wonder what the ghost here... Ah, damn it, I should have asked LeBlanc. He's... Mm. Well, this would be good for one of us that, uh, well, uses spells that are meant to be dodged or such uh i don't think i can wear it <laughs> it's magic it might actually shrink to someone's size or grow to someone's size hmm. maybe uh, you could put it on one of your puppets that is a good idea i point to i point to hazel that is a very good idea if, if no one else magic if no one else wants it, they they do have magical abilities some of them, sometimes, I think. I haven't made any yet. What about you or uh, you, uh, Miss Seldra? Do either of you use spells that are meant to try to bypass someone's immune system, cause them to try to dodge out of the way, etc.? I suppose I could make use of it. Uh, and you, Solomon? Uh, I mean, if no one else takes it by the time I have a puppet that can make proper use of it, then that's always a backup plan. Well, if it's of use to you, Miss Seldra, he'll hold it out to her. Uh, Seldra will reach out, and uh, she'll take, in her one good arm, she'll take uh, the hold of the mask, and then she'll put it on. All right. All right, so, so Seldra's, Seldra's just going to kind of wear this. She's just going to wear that. <laughs> It looks just like a uh, Baron LeBlanc's mask, so it's like a, like a, a kind of a, kind of a cheeky smile. By the way, Hazel, don't feel bad about my arm. It was my own mistake. Oh, that's all right. I I'm just glad you're you're safe. <laughs> don't you really shouldn't touch Wacko. He seems to have some some major powers. <laughs> yes, it seems, but he warned us to corrupting magic well to take me out. That's good. That means you're even stronger. I'd uh, I'd like to I I call back my falcon to me. Yay. Uh, actually, Wesley, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to give me like a perception to see what your falcon was able to scout? Ooh, yes, please. So your falcon got hit by a rock. I I, I imagine that I send it up, but I forget to uh, to take the cloth over its eyes off. Yeah, I was gonna say that basically, like you have it up there, like hmm, it's really black. <laughs> <laughs> so did you find anything up there? Uh, I take off the cloth real uh, quick and hold it behind my back. Uh, no, no, just normal silt flat. Hmm. I was going to do a thorough check myself, but if you believe it is safe, I shall trust your judgment. Uh, you you can you can uh you can take a take a look if you want, real quick. Are you sure? You said it was safe. I mean, yeah, but you know, I'm still getting the hang of flying it and all that and all Where, of that. Uh, you, you should pro you should probably take a check yourself. Very I could well. just float up there with you if you if you want. If if you would like, child. <laughs> she kind of she floats over and like sits on your shoulder. <laughs> Braxis like leans down because like he doesn't want to make her float too much, and as soon as she's on his shoulder, the crimson wings jet out of his back, and then he launches up into the air. <laughs> okay, <laughs> buddy. Well, Abraxas doesn't notice it, but Hazel kind of does. Uh, there's she's like, hmm, that's really weird. Can you see that? See what, child? There's like a, there's a big, like I don't even. It's like wiggly purple around the tower. Wait, what? 
And he kind of like looks around, trying to see. You look she's... a little closer, and you can see that outlining the tower is like a wiggly purple tendril isk aura that seems to be coating the whole thing. Mm, that's not creepy at all. He uh, <laughs> shakes his head, just like I am not sure what that is. We should inform the others. Yeah, I don't like it very much. Me either. We may want to proceed with caution. And as he's like slowly floating down, he's uh, transmitting everything that he saw to Ten Rears. He's like, okay, apparently Hazel saw weird purple energy swirling around. Like big purple, I don't know, snakes? <clears throat> Oh, oh, Tenry just like <laughs> has slight flashbacks and looks at her. I don't want to go there now. Why not? Uh, Tenry like pulls out the sword and starts drawing in the sand the giant purple snake creature they fought in the first episode. He'll just like draw that in the sand and point at it and be like, I don't want to fight it. He draws like a, a version of this on the floor. Uh, I you, so you should tinted. make a roll to you should make a roll to see how good it is. <laughs> Actually, that's a good point. Like uh, perform, slide of hand, maybe slide a hand. Eh. It's a dexterity. Dex, just thing. do dexterity, uh, honestly. Craft. Yeah, pretty good picture. You don't get all the details down, but you get like the good <laughs> face and the weird stick coming out of the head and the piercing eyes. And Hazel's <laughs> like, uh, no, like. And then she takes like a stick and draws like a straight line. No, like like a snake. <laughs> um, Brett, can I attempt to arcane check to see if I know what she's talking about? Uh, I guess. Go ahead. I, right, I don't. Cool, I don't really. Cool. I don't think you're gonna have much success with that, but <laughs> sure. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. What she's talking about sounds like an aura of some sort, but you don't have any clue what it could be. So Hazel, it's some kind of aura then. That's an aura of snakes. <laughs> oh, I'll have to see. It. I guess I'll have to see it for myself. Be sure. She floats over to Tedry and pats his shoulders. I'm sorry. Are you afraid of snakes? How are you touching? It 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 it, it 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 it's like a gesture. It's it would go through your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, sorry. No. I just um. <clears throat> Bad things I mean, happened last time we saw a snake-like creature. I make a note in my uh, in my non-existent notebook to make my next puppet a snake. <laughs> I, I have nothing against snakes. They're actually quite interesting. Actually, Ted, roll me a constitution save for snake phobia. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Good. Okay, Happy. now you, you're just slightly you're just slightly scared of those specific snakes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for good reason too. For good they reason. Kinda, they, they made me go meh. Yeah, no, uh, they, they made you go meh. <laughs> meh. Yeah. See those things. I think they. It felt like it drained my intellect, made me a vegetable almost. I could see everything, but I just couldn't do anything, and I don't like that. No, I they were, don't blame you. It was quite threatening and extremely intelligent. Thank you for your assistance, Hazel. Yeah, honestly... Like looks down if, and if, his throat. If, we, if we have to go up against one of those, uh, I think, well, we should leave? Yeah, definitely agreed. If only... I could. I still believe we should push on to the tower. I think so yeah. too. There's I... something weird's going on about with these. Uh, he points at the dog and Hazel. These two here, they something something we're missing, and I feel like we'll find it there. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a good idea. Agreed. Agreed. He, he walks yeah. over to Joel. Hey, do you have any more burgers? I'm still kind of hungry. <laughs> no, how are you going, I got some frozen ones. Can I cook up some uh my frozen patties on the spot there? Yeah, like, totally. I mean, they're not I'm frozen gonna, anymore. Gonna grill. You've been carrying them for a while. Well, you gotta thaw them first before 
cooking them. Yeah, dude, your your dad sack is like dripping slight burger grease from the thawed patty. I don't know, I wrapped them. Oh, I wrapped them. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, no, okay. Well, the package is kind of moist then. Looking at them makes me glad that I only eat souls. <laughs> That's a special statement. <laughs> what do you think silk tastes like? Asking for a friend. I assume it tastes something like uh, something like wood chippings mixed with corpse. Mm. I mean, probably. Corpse probably isn't a very good flavor, I'd have to imagine. It's not. Yeah, I don't think. I, 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 I turn to Denrir. Yeah, how would you. Um, you know I what? I'm, I'm just, away. You, you know what? I'm just going to leave leave his past in his past. I don't have a stomach, so I don't really understand hunger. <laughs> Hazel floats down to you. I can't eat, so I hey, don't really not, care. Not hungry buddies. I hold up my hand for a oh, high five. She reaches out her small hand to you, which is almost the same size as yours. <laughs> <laughs> of Francis is like standing over them both just like holding a hand above them can I join in on this she turns I, over to Abraxas and gives him I a high ang- five <laughs> I angle my hand upward he slowly like reaches it down and then just like makes a fist with a single finger and like taps the can <laughs> <laughs> yeah like his teamwork pinky. <laughs> Team, we don't eat. No. <laughs> you, you, you kids, sure you don't need anything to eat? <laughs> I had a lizard before we left, so I'm good for another like week. Yeah, I'm... Mr. Dad, I'd love to try your cooking, but I can't. Um, I could technically eat it, but I am. Um, I don't need to. It feels weird. All right then. Wacko yes, runs over to you and wags his tail eagerly. <laughs> Here, boy. <laughs> his, his mouth opens up. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give Wacko a burger then. Okay, toss a burger at Wacko. Toss a burger at Wacko. Wacko uh, just, just snaps the burger out of the air and it, like... You can notice it, like, sit on his tongue for a second... And instead of eating it, the burger just kind of dissolves and morphs into his tongue. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> he looks at you endearingly and then starts, like, shadow panting a little bit. A little bit of mist coming out of his mouth. That's creepy and adorable. I, 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 I look over and I'm like, it's so cute, but so deadly. What? It's like everything here. Yes. <laughs> Though you don't seem very deadly, child. You're more adorable than anything. I'm not deadly, I'm just dead. <laughs> Maybe adorableness point. is something she that's deadly. <laughs> I wonder if someone can die of cute overload or something. Her, her face like widens for a moment and she points at Joel and he's deadly! <laughs> So it just giggles. I I <laughs> I uh I do little golf claps and I'm like that was good. That was good. You hear you hear like skin on skin as tenor is like face palming over at the freaking tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you share that, Abraxas? That was horrible. Hilarious but horrible. <laughs> Hazel kind of pause. I thought it was funny. He yeah, means quite well. Accurate. It, he thinks it's funny, but uh, I think he's trying to be hard or something. I don't understand him fully. Hmm. If his grades say anything about it, if, he's, if anything, he's hard-headed. I... <laughs> uh, you're not wrong on that. I wave you're my not... hand in the air and I say, eh, mortals. I know, <laughs> right? Smiles. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Frank looks back and forth. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just now realizing how many of you don't die normally. The wacko pants again. <laughs> A practice just like gently pats freaking Frank's head. I know, child. I know. Anyway. Uh, now we have a. We, mm, half the party is dead. 
<laughs> I suggest we keep moving. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to put out the fire with the fire extinguisher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me an attack roll. Attack roll. Hang on. What kind of AC does a bonfire have? Uh, it's a good question. I'm, I'm gonna come up with one I'm real quick. Say something like eight. Dad, you, 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 like, sprayed around it, but because of the nature of the flamethrower, or, flamethrower, uh, fire extinguisher, yeah, <laughs> you're able to put it out. It's not the cleanest, but you do manage. Uh, okay, I, I kind of, I kind of kick the embers of the flame and make sure it's all out. It's, it's surrounded by silt. What, are you worried about it burning? <laughs> well, look at bad. the environment, there's, like, twigs and stuff. <laughs> it's safe. Pre burnt twigs, perfect for the picking. <laughs> right. Uh, Frank's like, okay, we, uh, well, we can see the bell tower. Are we gonna? He looks at Abraxas. Choo choo. Is, is the fire out already? Yeah, the fire's out. Yes, I can <clears throat> make us a path. Tender still over the tombstone, like, put my hand on it, just like, all right, well, see you later, sir. And, uh, try not to have. Too much fun, I guess. I puppet Something. my bird to pick me up while I'm holding my sock puppet. <laughs> Can help. Yeah. Rex just kind of like looks at the people getting close to him. You might want to back off a little bit first. Hazel like floats up, up and over to get like a vertical view. Frank, you might want to back up a little bit. What? You might want to move, Frank. You oh, right, 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 I forgot, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He steps almost next to Wacko, <laughs> then remembers and steps back next to Joel. <laughs> All right, child, which path would be the easiest to break through to? Uh, I'm going to say straight, she says, looking forward. From where I am or where you are? Mm, she ponders for a moment. And then she, like, floats down over and gives you, like, 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 uh, her, her arm extends out and gives you, like, a green flag and waves it up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and he will begin to haul back and... <laughs> oh, wow, oh, okay. No. So <laughs> Abrex is just, like, hamming it up a little bit too much for the sake of Hazel. Doesn't get very far with the punch. <laughs> it just, like, punches a little divot in the wall. Alright, there's the good hand held, and... <clears throat> he uh, does that thing where he like lines the fist up with that uh, that new air quote handhold he made totally on purpose. Hauls back and goes for a second punch. Abraxas, you level <laughs> the terrain in front of you as per usual, <laughs> and it just extends out kind of in the direction that Hazel was pointing, and continues onwards. You've basically made like a big old divot in the silt. Alright, give me one oh, moment, everyone. Nice. <sighs> he stretches a moment and gets the uh, wings ready. <laughs> Straight ahead, you said, right, child? Uh, she floats up a little. Yeah! Alright, and he uh, <laughs> gets his wings out and then, like, looks over to the tombstone. Boy, come on! What? Oh, right. <clears throat> Sorry. Got a little distracted. He walks over as uh, a Braxis yeah. as a Braxis starts to uh, float a little bit as he flaps his wings and just uh, dive bombs through, trying to make a path for everyone quickly. Like the wave from your wings is pushing silt to the side as you fly, and you're basically <laughs> like you know, like the wake of a of a cruise liner. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, he does the X arms thing, and he's just, like, flying as quick as he can, smashing through stuff. As you do this, Wacko just sprints past, chasing you down. Oh, no. was <laughs> like, oh, boy, okay. Mm, yeah, I'll follow him and make sure he doesn't mm, try and bite him. I mean, he should be fine, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. I don't oh, want yeah. what happened to Selger that happened to someone else. I think he's okay, since he's technically a fiend of... Hey, it's confusing. Don't don't worry about it. Like, wait, weird. guys, don't leave without me. Ah! 
<laughs> uh, so Abrax is barreling down through the salt flats through the instruction of Hazel, but pretty much he just it's like a straight shot from here. You can see the bell tower getting closer in the distance. And as you arrive to the bell tower, uh, the ground sort of starts to slope down in a method of which you're able to see a little bit more of the area in front of you. Oh, uh, if it's going to slope down, he's going to slow and, like, <laughs> make sure he can act as a brace if people start sliding. Um, yeah, as you do that, you also notice that Hazel kind of starts to slow down, too, like before you had, and she's, like, wobbling to the side a little bit. Hazel, are you all right? Mm, she's like, it's getting hard to see. There's so much life energy in the air here. Really? It's hmm. like, I... Uh, she, like, scratches her neck a little bit. I think I'll be able to handle it. I just... Mm, gotta get used to seeing. 